1 Peter chapter 4, 7 to 11. And I read, the end of the world is coming soon. I repeat that. The end of the world is coming soon. Therefore, be earnest and disciplined in your prayers. Verse 8 says, most important of all, continue to show deep love for each other. For love covers a multitude of sins. Cheerfully share your home with those who need a meal or a place to stay. God has given each of you a gift from his great variety of spiritual gifts. Use them well to serve one another. Do you have the gift of speaking? Then speak as though God himself was speaking to you. Do you have the gift of helping others? Do it with all the strength and energy that God supplies. Then everything you do will bring glory to God to Jesus Christ. All glory and power to him forever and ever. Amen. And my topic today is serving one another. Serving one another. There is a phrase coined by a psychologist named Abraham Maslow. And that phrase is called self-actualization. Self-actualization. What is this? It is the process of becoming everything you are capable of becoming. The ability to become the best version of yourself. This is the very tip of Maslow's pyramid. And not everyone achieves or reaches that level. By accomplishing self-actualization, you are able to find the meaning and purpose in your life. And you are able to say you truly lived. In other words, you have fulfilled your mission in life. Last week I was looking at my wife's favorite show. And I, I, I choose to see the Brother B's laughing in the back there. It is his wife's favorite show also. So don't, don't, don't laugh at me. But I, um, I choose to sit with her and look at the show. And there is an elderly actor there. She said, I do not fear death. I do not fear death, but I fear death in living. To me, that was very profound. Because what she said afterwards, she said, I fear living life without a purpose. To her, that is death in living. Living life Without a purpose. No zest in life. No fragrance in life. Living life without a purpose. I believe there is no greater satisfaction or fulfillment in life than being of service to another. I believe that with all my heart. There is no greater satisfaction or fulfillment in life than being of service to another, especially to those who are less fortunate. The poor, the needy, the homeless, the destitute, and the hungry. Acts 20, 35 says, it is more blessed to give than to receive. It is more rewarding to give than to receive. I don't know about you, but Something comes over me. There's a feeling that comes over me when I give to someone, especially someone who is in great need. I look at a smile on that person's face. 
And if that person think that they have joy, I have much more joy. It is more rewarding to give than to receive. Proverbs 19, verse 7 says, He that giveth to the poor, lend it to God. And he will repay. For God is no man's debtor. He will repay. There are many proverbs, songs, and wise sayings that guide our conscience as we strive to coexist in this world and live a peaceable life. I'm sure we heard, no man is an island. We all need each other sometime. There is a song that says, lean on me when you're not strong. And I'll be your friend. I'll help you carry on. But it won't be long that I'm going to need somebody to lean on. Somebody said, our service to our fellow men is the rent we pay for living on God's green earth. Our service to our fellow men. That is the rent we pay for living on God's green earth. Our passage in verse 7 opens up with a statement that reads like a newspaper headline. The end of the world is coming soon. I repeat, the end of the world is coming soon. These are the words that will stop you in your track and make you think we are living at the very end of time. Jesus is coming again. Now, I want you to, to hit the pause button of your very busy and important life for a second and look through the window and what do you see? I see COVID pandemic passing by. I see the war in Ukraine. Rumors of war in China, North Korea, and Iran. I see famine in East Africa. Storms, earthquake, tornadoes. Brethren, the end of the world is coming soon. I believe Peter wanted to get our attention, to sober our minds to the point of redeeming the time, buying up the time, and making every second count. He wanted to sober up our mind. The end of the world is coming soon. Now, because of this fact, this bold statement, I ask you this morning, what changes are you willing to make in your very busy and important life? Jesus is coming soon. The end of time is coming. What are you willing to do? What changes are you willing to make in your very busy and important life? Number one. Peter admonished us in verse 7. He says, be earnest and disciplined in your prayers. In other words, be sincere. Have zealousness of purpose in your prayer. Be diligent. Be watchful. Be focused. Be vigilant. We are watchmen on the wall. We are to sound the alarm and warn men and women to prepare for the return of the Lord. We are to intercede and fight fiercely in prayer and supplication for the souls of men. We are to fight fiercely and intercede in prayer for the souls of men. Note one soul is what more than this whole wide world. 
Jesus was willing to die even for one soul. Let us therefore serve one another in prayer. Fight for each other. Your need becomes my need. Your problem is my problem. I will not rest until you are blessed. Say that to one another. I will not rest until you are blessed. I will push. In other words, I will persevere until something happens. Serving one another. Your need is my need. And I'm going to push. I am going to persevere until something happens. Philippians chapter 2 verse 3 to 4 says, Don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Be humble. Thinking of others as better than yourself. Listen up. It's only in the Bible you're going to find words like that. Come on. This is a higher calling. This is a higher order. Be humble. Think of others as better than yourselves. Don't look out for your own interests. But take an interest in others too. Make an investment in the lives of others. Plant a seed. Water it. And see God gives the increase. Hallelujah. Number two. In verse eight, Peter said, most important. No, that will get our attention. Most important of all, continue to show deep love for each other. He said, just show love. He said, show deep love for each other. For love covers a multitude of sin. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. It covers a multitude of sin. It is imperative that we display deep love. Agape love. Sacrificial love to one another. Especially in light of the preparation to meet the Lord. Hallelujah. The end of time is coming soon. Why? Because love covers a multitude of sin. It is a love that looks beyond our faults. No, not one of us is perfect. We all make mistakes. It is a gap in love that accepts the sinner but confronts the sin. On the other hand, it is deceptive love that accepts the sinner and his sin. But we are called to practice a gap in love. Amen. For love covers a multitude of sin. Jesus commands us to love our neighbor as ourselves. Romans chapter 12 verse 10 says, Be kindly affectionate. Be kindly affectionate. One to another. With brotherly love. Giving preference here again, to another. In honor, preferring one another. Love is a cement that binds us together. It is the foundation upon which we build. Okay, it is more than a foundation. It is a roof. It is a wall. Praise the name of Jesus. Love goes beyond time and into eternity. Love is the one ingredient that gives taste and value to everything that we do. Without love, our works are meaningless. Rubbish. Most important, continue to show deep love. For it protects. It comforts. It covers a multitude of sin. Hallelujah. Number three. In verse 9, he says, Cheerfully. Say that word with me. Not grudgingly. Cheerfully. He said, cheerfully share your home with those who need a meal or a place to stay. 
carefully share your home with those who need a meal or a place to stay. I don't know about you, but I am glad that Peter spoke of deep love before. Because for many of us, we need strong agape love to cheerfully share our home, our food, and our money. It takes strong agape love. Listen to me. We could accommodate many of us on the job. So please don't come to my job. <laughs> you, listen, I see you on the job. I will say hi to you. But don't come to my, I don't want to see you in my house. That's how we think. Somebody said that our purse, our purse string is tied to our heart. So every time we pull our purse, our heart turns. However, if there is love in our heart, it will be easy to open our purse. We will do it cheerfully, not grudgingly. But if there is no love, oh my God. It will be breaking your heart every time you do that. Hallelujah. Let me remind you, the end of the world is coming. Be hospitable. Hebrews 13 verse 1 to 2 says, Let brotherly love continue. Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have, have entertained angels on a way. Do not forget to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels on a way. You remember the widow from Zarephath? She was there. And this gentleman... This prophet came and said, ma'am, I am hungry. I want you to just give me a little cake or a little bread to eat. She said, all I have is just enough for my son and I to eat and then I'm going to die. He said, listen, do one for me first. And then, hello, apparently you didn't hear what I just said. But many of us would have given the prophet a hand and said, listen, you can talk to this hand. But I am going to make something for my son and myself and later for you. But she didn't do that. She obeyed the prophet. And the word of God said, she ate for many days. Don't be hasty to dismiss someone based on your five senses. Because of what you see. Because of how they smell. Because of what you perceive in them. Don't allow your five senses to judge people based on the color of their skin. Or the texture of their hair. Or their economic status. Don't do that. You might just miss out on the opportunity to entertain an angel. Yeah. Let me remind you, your possession, your status, and power will mean nothing in God's kingdom. But you will spend eternity with other people. Invest your time, your talents, your home, your food, where they will make an eternal difference. Right here, right now. This is where we make a difference. You make an investment here. You're going to reap in this life and in the one to come. Amen. Hallelujah. Don't be as a rich fool whose bonds were filled to bursting and his crops were still in the field. And he said, This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to build new bonds. He said, Soul, you've got to take it easy. Just relax. Life is good. Eat, drink, and be merry. With no regards to those on the outside. The Lord said, this night, your soul will be required of you. And what will happen to all the projects that you've been just there? With no regards to anyone. No regards to God. And not thinking about others. 
Don't be as the rich fool. Don't be a hoarder of the blessing. Be a conduit of the blessing. Say, Lord, use me to be a blessing, God. Make me a blessing, dear Lord God. Bless others through me. Make me a conduit of your blessing. Finally, number four. In verse 10 it says, God has given each of you a gift from his great variety of spiritual gifts. He said, use them well to serve one another. God has given each of you a gift from his great variety. He said, use them well to serve one another. Each one of us has a gift, a talent. We did not develop it by our own ingenuity. It was given to us by God to be used to serve one another. King James Version says, as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Serve one another. According to 1 Corinthians 4 verse 2, Stewards are required to be faithful in what they've been entrusted with. Our abilities to be faithfully used in serving others. None are to be used for our own exclusive enjoyment. Your gift is to be used for helping others, not exclusively for your own enjoyment. Some people well aware of the abilities believe they have the right to use their abilities as they please. Others feel they have no special talent at all. Peter addresses both groups in these verses. Everyone has some gift. Find yours and serve one another. Everyone has a gift. Build the kingdom of God. Verse 11 says, do you have the gift of speaking? Then speak as though God himself was speaking to you. Not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of power and the spirit. King James Version says, speak as the oracle. Speak as the utterance. I am careful when I stand here that I am used as a, as a medium that God can speak to me. Not my words. Because I want to make sure that that word reaches somebody, reaches some soul, reaches some need in the name of Jesus. Let God speak to you to meet the need of others. Do you have the gift of helping others? Do it with all the strength and energy that God supplies. When God gives an assignment, he also gives the ability and the supplies to complete the assignment. Serve one another heartily, joyfully, fiercely, and give liberally. Give cheerfully to the needs of others. Peter ends his discourse by saying, Then everything you do will bring glory to God through Jesus Christ. Everything that you do will bring glory to God through Jesus Christ. In other words, when you walk in obedience to the word of God, your life will bring glory to God. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 says, When you do according to all that is written therein, then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. I don't want you to miss that one. I'm going to say it again. That's right. He said, when you do according to what is written therein, then thou shall make thy way prosperous. God didn't say, I will make your way prosperous. But when you obey my word, you will make your way prosperous. And you will have good success. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you walk in obedience to the word of God, there is a blessing of prosperity and good success. Hallelujah. 
Moreover, the Lord will say unto us, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Let us be obedient to serve one another. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah.